name is Albert and I work in motor manufacturing. Today, we're going to take apart one of these grid all axle motors. In general, direct drive hubs are pretty robust and they don't need to be serviced at any point in their life. However, there are cases where opening the motor up is essential to troubleshoot an issue, such as cable damage from an installation mishap. Very first step, we want to unlace the rim for the motor because we won't be able to work on it without doing that. You can do that with a spoke wrench, but we won't be covering that in this video. Let's just get right into the motor disassembly. Okay, so the first step, we're going to want to take off the cassette if you have one on. So just take your chain whip tool and your cassette removal tool. So the next step, which is really important, is to take out this free hub screws. So if you do not remove these screws, then when you're pulling off the side plates, you will pull off the torque sensor and rip out the wires. So let's take our Phillips two. Once that's done, we're gonna use a T9 bit and take off the eight side plate screws. The side plate screws have an O-ring, which is used to seal the stator aid in the motor. Make sure those are still on the screw when you take them off. So now we're going to take off the side plate. Now, if you don't have a gear puller, you can try doing this with your thumbs and pushing against the free hub down and pulling the side plates at the same time. But this is really hard. So using a gear puller is really useful here. It is really important that the free hub stays down when you pull off the side plate because we don't want to rip off the wires. If you have a through axle adapter here, this will keep it pushed down. But if you don't, you may need to use a washer so that the free hub doesn't come out. Take your gear puller, put it on your adapter. And there we go, we're inside the motor. So here you can access the torque sensor board and the torque sensor itself. If you want to replace the torque sensor, for example, to a SRAM, then you'll have to take this out. Take off your adapter. First, take some tweezers. To remove the torque sensor, we're going to first remove the connector. The connector has two wings on here that need to be depressed before pulling it apart. You can take some tweezers and carefully depress it here and just kind of pull it out at the same time very tricky just tilt the pcb to get the cable out and you're just going to pull that right off so if you're replacing it the torque sensor there are a couple of nibs here these need to be aligned with this notch on the axle Should slide right on. Double check that it's aligned. Looks good. And then we're gonna wanna put the connector back into the board here. So, just like this. Ensure that the wings are properly clicked in. Then you can tuck the cable back under the piece of B. There you go. So that is the torque sensor replacement. If this is all you need to do, then you can just reassemble the motor, but to continue to work on the motor, like taking out the stator to look at the hall sensors, then we'll need to take the gear puller to the other side. If your torque arm is still on and your disc rotor is still on, we'll just remove those things. Your T25 bit to take off your disc rotor. Take a gear puller and put it on the axle here. Okay. 
So while you're doing this, just keep an eye on the cable here. You don't want to squish it too much. Once it's all loose, you should just be able to pull it straight off. Just like that. Be careful with the mag ring. If this mag ring gets close to the stator, it will snap right back into the mag ring. So watch your fingers. Once you have the stator apart, now we can work on the wiring or the hall sensors where you can place the cable wiring as well. The ball bearing is very robust. This generally doesn't need replacement. We've even had customers that are going on 100,000 kilometers on these. But if you do need to replace this, pull out the bearing. In this case, it got stuck to the axle, which is fine. You could pull that off there and then just replace it. Okay, so now the motor is, is ready for reassembly. So here's one of the scariest parts. We're gonna be taking the stator and dropping it back into the mag ring. You have to be really careful here and watch your fingers as it really wants to get sucked into the mag ring. I have a little rod here that helps me do this. You don't have to have this, but it's, it's helpful. You put it in that side of the axle. Then what we wanna do is fish the cable through the mag ring. We're gonna put in the stator and you wanna be really careful where you have your fingers. Don't have your thumb here. So take your side plate and uh, make sure the O-ring is seated in here properly. Sometimes it could come off. If you see it like that, we can just push it right back into the groove there. So there is a certain hole pattern that you need to follow when you put on the side plate. There are two holes that are shorter distance between them than the rest of them. These two holes here are shorter than these two. So what you wanna do is align that up with these two short holes. This will be next to the grid logo. So what we wanna do is align it with the free hub holes first, and then align it with the side plate. You can use a small drill bit to help you with this. Just like that. Take your free hub screws. We're gonna use medium thread locker here. Okay, so we want to torque up these free hub screws to 2.5 newton meters. So normally uh, we would have a hydraulic press to press the motor together. And we'll probably just be using a tube and then pressing on the backside here. But not everyone has a hydraulic press. So we're just going to take some pieces of wood and a big clamp. And let's set it up here. So for the cable side, we want to make sure we're pressing on the side plate and not on the axle. For this side, we just want to press on the center area here on the side plate. So just take your clamp. Clamp here. Bring this up. Okay, so just make sure the side plate is going to be lined up with the drill that you put in earlier. Just like that, it'll snap in. Okay, so we just want to close up the side plate enough that the screw will just pull the rest of it together. So, so now we're back to reassembling the motor. Again, make sure your O-rings are on your screws. Oh, yeah. Let's put in one first. So we want to torque the side plate screws to 0 0.8 Newton meters. Okay. 
So here I do like to just give it a light tap to make sure the side plate is properly seated before the final torque. And now we'll just finish off the torquening. So now we want to just make sure that there's absolutely no gap between the mag ring and the side plate. If you bought a rear motor from us in 2023, then you will have a version 2 rear. And the process to disassemble this is pretty much the same, except that the free hub itself is not attached to the side plate. It just comes right off. You can just pull it like that. At this point, the process is the same. This assembly of the front motor is basically the same as the rear, except there's less steps. You don't have to deal with the cassette. What we can do is we can just use the gear puller on the quick release, but if you don't want to damage the quick release or, or other adapters, then you can just use a washer on top of it. Thanks for watching the disassembly of the Grinnell axle motor. Hopefully you don't have to take it apart, but if you do, this video should help you. Cheers.